Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Players Andre Clemson. I'm your host, Darren Rencher. And once again, it'll be your favorites, current players, special guests, and some legends. Today, we're joined by a new, new legend, but fr fresh off being a current player, uh, basketball, phenom, come off a legendary run, PJ Hall. What up, y'all? <laughs> what up, bro? Appreciate it, man. Glad to have you. How you feeling? I feel good, man. Yeah, I feel good. Obviously, season ended with a high, you know, wanted to be a little higher, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a great end of the season, big run, and now I'm just you know training for the combine, yeah. training for the draft and all that stuff. Uh, got another year, haven't put anything out about it yet. We're seeing. Uh, I do, you know, I, I don't want to leave. Yeah, but uh, we're gonna have to see. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, bro. Well, let's 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 get into the ending because I was hyped, bro. Like, oh, as awesome. as like a proud alum, and I haven't been on this side of a any run really, like yeah. football, basketball. It's my first. Like, all right, we've made a push nationally yeah bro it was dope to see what y'all did like i was super proud super like just i don't know maybe the, the orange you used to talk about clemson family just yeah. watching the games like okay this is special yeah, how, how did you feel i felt incredible i mean i'll tell you what it's funny like like i i saw this guy on twitter that he's gonna you're gonna see this if he <laughs> if he ends up seeing it the cliff spammons guy yeah you know what i'm talking about no, dude do, dude is hilarious <laughs> like, like we we i don't know if any of us follow him right it's like we don't know like especially in season like we don't want to keep all of that but stuff you, but you, like, want, you definitely see oh we see all of them man and uh the uh you said the aura i just saw the the clip last night he was like this is the most aura team ever like and it was <laughs> it was a uh, mixed tape he made it was like ain't it fun ain't yeah it fun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah it was, it was awesome it's funny but it was man it was special it was a uh, heck of a ride yeah uh, great end of the season obviously you know it was a tough game to lose but you know at the same time like like Alabama outscores people, right? And they got hot, and they did. Guys hit shots, and yeah, I can I can lose that way. Yeah. So that's the only difference. Like people, you know, come up to me, it's like, oh, I hated your loss, and like obviously I do too. Correct. But you know, as a competitor, it's like if you give a game away, it's yeah. like that really stings. You For know, sure. getting beat is different. Yeah. I I 100 agree. Yeah. I think that was the coolest part, as because it, it it the whole time it didn't feel like luck, and everybody was thinking, oh, we got lucky. But every <laughs> game, yeah. you know, what I'm saying it was. We're either yeah. beating somebody or it was competitive, and to see us go out like that to me it was like, okay. You can tip your hat, yeah, because we we like we belong. So oh that, yeah, that probably been the most, you know, like people that really had something to say. Well, if you get to that big game and you like lay an egg and you yeah. get blown out like some other teams in in, in the in the tournament, mm -hmm. the whole entire game. I mean, I believe we're gonna win up until oh, like, yeah. the last no, couple of minutes. You know, it's just kind of. I swear to you, I keep looking back. To, I just got goosebumps thinking about it, like. Like Joe hits back to back threes, correct, and they hit three in a row, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, like, what, it's like, what, what are you doing? doing? Yeah, what, what are we you doing, doing, man? So, yeah, I mean, like, like you said, it's like the whole time, it's like we're right in there. I go out with fouls uh, after that, and it's still it was like two and a half minutes left, three minutes left. And it's yeah. like you know we still got a shot at this, and a uh, couple balls don't go in, they right. make a couple more, and it's like, uh, all right, you know what, tip your hat, it's right? Over. But uh, yeah, speaking of like you know like belonging there, yeah, I mean that's how we felt, man. You know, like starting the season, like. Like uh, I told or we we had to talk about the guys like our like our floors like the Sweet Sixteen. That's yeah. like where we should get right with the talent we got, the coaching we got. I mean, this is the, one of the best staffs I ever played for. Wow. And so you know, getting to that tournament and having the opportunity to keep playing was amazing. And then before the Sweet Sixteen game, like when we were playing in that against uh, Arizona, mm -hmm. yeah, it was like I told the guys in our last little huddle before the tip, I was yeah. like. Hey, like you know, we're at our baseline now. Like wow. we're at the, we're at the floor we're supposed to be at. Let's advance. Like this is where we're supposed to be. So it was special, man. It was special to be out there and help lead those guys. Yeah. Yeah. How did how did it feel? I mean, for you, you kind of got like, the probably the most unique story of the bunch. Like homegrown. We'll get into that. But homegrown, you choose to come here and to see like the almost like the perfect ribbon to. Well, we don't know yet, but like obviously, somewhat could be the end of your career. Yeah. How'd that feel? Man, it was like I keep telling people it was so special to like finally have something I could attach my name to mm. and like you know obviously it would have been like to see Final Four up there but you know there's still going to be an elite eight, elite eight banner right? and uh, you know having that great run like you know like my whole career was like my freshman year we came in had a really people overlooked that freshman year team that we had with Amir yeah. uh, his team like team was nice like mm -hmm. dude that team was it, it sucks about COVID because like we were rolling in like 12th in the country and then we we get COVID, we're up, we're out of commission for like ten days. Right. Come back and get waxed three <laughs> three times. I remember yeah. we first game back. Of course, we're playing Virginia, like the one of the toughest defenses in the country. Nice, and it was uh it was we had the number one adjusted defense in the country. Yeah. They had the number two. Wow. They came in and beat us eighty five to forty five. So like it was we were just all out of sync. We were yeah. off for ten days. 
come back, play them, lose to FSU, lose to Duke. I get baptized with Jalen Johnson. Like, it was not fun. Like, so, <laughs> so like, it was a rough go round. But, like, looking back and still making the tournament and having a good year, like, yeah. we had Amir Sims at 6'8", John Bear at 6'10", uh, John Newman at 6'5", uh, Hunter Tyson at 6'8", Omax 6'8", yeah. me at 6'10", Link Kidd at 6'10". We were massive. Like, yeah. we were a huge team. And so, like, that team was nice. Having that team, not winning really anything, sophomore year was rough. Um, one game off from the conference championship my junior year, mm -hmm. and then then losing the semifinals ACC. I hadn't won anything yet. Yeah. And then you know having this year of a uh, a letdown in the regular season. Like right. we started off eleven and one, hot, hot. Come in, lose a couple games, and we're struggling. Ended up finishing up like eleven and nine. Then get toasted in the ACC tournament. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are we doing? Yeah. And then to finally you know we bounce back and to finally have something I can attach my name to was amazing. That's that's. That's the most special part about it, yeah. No, and I love that for you because I think yeah. that it's tough, man. We were talking about this a couple of times, but I think in sports, like sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. No, it yeah, doesn't. It doesn't tell like the true story of what you feel like you put into something, yeah. or who you feel like you are, mm -hmm. who somebody else is, and even speaking to to me from also looking in, because like I defend a little bit, but because I, I I just respect you. You don't stay somewhere for a long time if you're just terrible. <laughs> you know, you know, like yeah. speaking, of, speaking of Brownell, because a lot of people get on Twitter, and obviously recency bias is a real thing. And I ain't saying like, like in the day, like especially with nowadays, like, people getting paid, he's getting paid. It's mm -hmm. like, so there are expectations mm -hmm. for a certain amount of standard, but it is one of those things where okay, everybody must know something that somebody else doesn't. The, exactly. the public doesn't know. The exactly. players, Graham Neff, yeah. the staff, because people are believing y'all are showing up every day. So to me, to see y'all rally for him. The way y'all did, yeah. that was one of the coolest parts for me. So just speak to that. Yeah, I mean, like, from day one, uh, being at Clemson, like, I mean, dude does stuff the right way. Yeah. Like, from being recruited, even yeah. before day one, like, being recruited in high school, does stuff the right way. Never crossed any boundaries, never did anything that shouldn't be due. Like, he, he does stuff the right way. That's what his program is built upon. Right. And so his staff does stuff the right way. His players do stuff the right way. I mean, he is big on my guys graduate and my yeah. guys don't get in trouble. Right. And so – like and that rings true, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, playing for him was special for the past four years. And like, like I say, like as I go through these times that you know we are, we're having success, mm -hmm. that's one thing that I like to ring like remind people of is like, hey, like y'all got to realize like in the tournament, the game plans were insane. Mm -hmm. Game plans were to a T, basically perfection. Yeah. I mean, even even the Alabama game plan was was really really good. Yeah, they just hit shots. I mean, Mark Sears, I mean, dude's a killer. He, was like, he can play. He was hoping. And so, like, that's what I try to explain to people is in terms of X's and O's, I couldn't care less if you like the guy. Yeah. Dude, like, and first of all, you don't know the guy. Yeah. So that's the other point is, yeah. like, you don't know him. Dude, incredible. Incredible coach, incredible guy, incredible X's and O's guys, uh, incredible developer. Like, yeah. I mean, look at me, like, develop, I mean, develop me to what I am, develop, um, develop Amir, Hunter, yeah. all these guys, Chase. Uh, it's been special, man, and uh, I wouldn't change it. I'd do it over again. I'd do it over again in a heartbeat. He knows how to coach. He knows how to deliver messages, and it's special. Yeah. What was that like, I mean, as far as, like, the team conversation? Because, you know, it's one of those things when y'all lose games, like, people obviously going to blame him. Yeah. Like, the public, it's, it's kind of funny because the public will never blame the player. Let's just say yeah, crazy. Exactly, yeah. You're always going to blame the coach. I always tell the guys, like, I, I don't tell them necessarily when we lose, but, yeah, I tell them when we win. It's like, hey, like, we're, we're winning the games, but we're also losing the games. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I'm always telling them, like, we're out there, like, try to get them to relax and, like, have a little confidence. Like, yeah. hey, like, we make the plays. We right. win these games. Now, they give us, you know, the the bread to do it. We just go out and butter it. And so, like, right. you know, we go out there and we were the ones making the plays. But, yeah, like, guys don't realize, like, like – Outside of the outside of the team, like yeah, it's it's not them that's losing these things. And right. he actually he jumped my tail one time at a uh, at a uh, uh, Wake Forest this year. Had a rough first half. I literally just cut, like I, I had like two or three layups like yeah. into someone's chest. Like rolled around the rim, rolled out. And I'm like I just can't buy a bucket right now. Yeah. We and I also I shot like two or three threes that rimmed out or whatever. And uh, we're in halftime. He's like ripping me. He's like. After this game, I'm gonna get killed because of you. You're not, you're taking threes. I'm like, all right, whatever, man. So it's yeah, it's uh, it's funny. It's people people jumping about stuff that he has no control over. Yeah. And so yeah, he uh, he has a tough job that I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Fair enough. Um. But then, like I said, to me, the coolest part was to see y'all rally for him. Oh yeah. And then 
to see him, like I said, like he was obviously in the world street, you know, it was kind of like C was hot. Mm-hmm. And just because a long time of expectation, but to me to see him punch his ticket, which is well deserved because he's been here forever. Like he's one of the yeah. most tenured coaches in ACC, mm-hmm. and to now see, okay, like he's here to stay and once yeah. again. Um, and then getting into you put on your story, you said what a ride for Clemson. How would you describe? You kind of alluded to us. How would you describe your Clemson experience, dude? I mean, special, like beyond belief. Like you know, there's been obviously a lot of ups and downs in like everyone's career, right? Uh, but personally like I had a lot of stuff not go my way personally with injuries and stuff behind the scenes and you know expectations obviously not winning like wanting to deliver for the program right like you know like I I always told my parents my girlfriend like like every time I'm playing out there and something you know we come up like this short I always said like I felt like it's supposed to be me like Mm -hmm. I'm a hometown kid like I'm supposed to be the one that delivers this right and like I I couldn't do it yeah you know I came up short so many times and it's like I had these guys now they're like in this tournament like i didn't have a great tournament we had guys that like lifted me up and lifted me up to you know go out there and we went on there succeeded so having you know freshman year came in as a highly touted recruit yeah top 50 top 40 guy whatever it was to want to want to come in and play and then you know obviously didn't um was learned and experienced behind a mirror uh which was probably one of the best things that ever happened for me mm-hmm. uh to come in here and not have anything handed to me and then sophomore year have a huge breakout year um I obviously break my foot middle of the year finish the year on that and I think that was one thing that like, like kind of gave me confidence going throughout my career because like I broke my foot um really around like the de- December time like people yeah. thought that it was like you know like I heard it against Louisville then missed three games at right. the end of the year but it was I wasn't practicing since like December yeah and so it was just playing so like having that kind of personal success playing while I was on like one foot, one yeah, flat tire. Right. It was like, oh, like, dude, if I can get this right, like, you know, it's 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 go time. Yeah. So then, you know, obviously I I um uh come back from that foot surgery after the year uh and uh, I remember you know walking into the to uh, my locker room like one foot whatever after <laughs> surgery and I was like, hey, like I'm gonna get this. I have a video recording on and I was like, when I come back for this, like. I'm going to have a huge year. We had these names on our wall and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, my name's going to be up here. And then first practice back, I blow my knee out. And it was like, dude, like all the the air went out the gym. And uh, our trainer was trying to have some – a bright, a bright, yeah, bright outlook. Right. He was like, oh, yeah, it looks like a sprain. He's like, it it wasn't like my kneecap popped out of my leg. It was was like – it was a dislocation of the kneecap tore the PFL. And – yeah, he was like, looks like a sprain, you know, a couple of weeks. And I was just laying down on the ground like, no, no, not that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not that. that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, obviously had knee surgery right there and uh, took a while to come back from that. Then I'm playing on one leg again. I mean, because yeah. I, I had a – it was really like a four-and-a-half-month recovery and mm-hmm. did it in three Yeah. to come back for the year. Struggled all year with conditioning, uh, strength in my leg. So just, you know, the personal battles to get where I was this past year right. and to have the kind of year that I had uh, was special to me. And, you know, like looking back on like I wouldn't have done it without these guys that, that helped me along the way. Like Joe sure. came in. I remember we lost uh, at Memphis. And I told him after the game, I was like, hey, man, like late in the game, you know, I got into it with a couple of guys and got the crowd going to yeah. bad shots. I was like, hey, man, like I'm sorry. Like it's not going to happen again. And he was like, listen, dude, like, you're fine. Like, I came here to help you. Yeah. Like, I came here to help you do this. And so, like, having, like, the kind of support like that, like, that was that was special. And yeah. so, um, it's been an incredible run. And to do it for four years, be four years here with Chase, yeah. four years here with Alex, um, play with Hunter Tyson for two or three years, I mean, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Read you a quote. I don't know if you saw this. I saw this the other day, and I want to hear your thoughts about it. Uh, people say like your journey is like a mission accomplished, and this is a quote. This is a this is a powerful quote, bro. I don't know if you saw this. What C.J. Spiller is to football, P.J. Hall is to basketball. How do you feel about that? That's uh, yeah, goosebumps from that one, no. I mean, dude. C.J. Spiller. I remember. So I I I wasn't a. I really didn't what didn't watch sports growing up. Yeah. I was you know rather be like outside, mess around doing whatever. Yeah. Who knows what? So. I wasn't like a big Clemson fan, um, but all my boys were. And right. so I knew who C.J. Spiller was from going over to their house, and, like, I knew, like, 
Like, it was a big deal. Right. Uh, he was like, I, once I got a little older than Taj Boyd, Correct. I thought Taj Boyd was the man. That's Gosh. when. That's whenever I like started playing middle school football. Yeah. Uh, so like CJ Spillers to have anyone even consider that, I, I don't know if, I don't know if that really rings true. <laughs> but I mean, it uh, hopefully, I think that might ring true if we if I can push push them to a a new level. You know, we just did mm. it once. You know, I hope that these guys can. You know, kind of continue to follow my footsteps and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think that leaving a lasting impact on a program like CJ did, yeah. and then to come back, and uh, you know, he's he's working with the team now, right? right. Yeah. So for, for him to come back, like, and give back to even more to the program, that's that's special, and that's something that's you know leaves a legacy. Well, that's you know? powerful, bro. And I think the to me the correlation is you start talking about leaving a legacy is he was he was one of he was one of the highly touted guys. Mm -hmm. He's a five star, you know, top whatever guy, and it was when Sweeney. I think Swinney was still like uh, he wasn't even head coach, but he was like the first person to believe in Coach Swinney. Yeah, like first big recruit that just came. Swinney brought him in, and obviously he believed in the vision. He believed in what he because he was selling a dream. You know, like the dream, yeah. it was there, but it was also like the dream was had it's to be a dream. Correct. Yeah. yeah, he sold him on a dream. CJ could have went other places, mm -hmm. um, but he was like, I believe in it. He came, and then a big part of the story was also him coming back because mm -hmm. he could have left his junior year, but he wanted to come back and he wanted to leave a better taste in his mouth for what he wanted to leave at Clemson. They come back and obviously right off, kind of right off into the sunset. Yeah, man. And obviously to see that be like a cornerstone in the Clemson football program. And then obviously everything happened after that, like the last. Yeah. Dynasty. You know, like 10, I mean, 12 dude, years. Like yeah, to see, amazing. But it takes, it does take that one guy, that mm -hmm. one big recruit, you know, to kind of go away from the status quo and do something different. Yeah. And believe in somebody. And his career, he like, it's kind of crazy. Like he didn't. He uh, played behind James Davis when he came in. Mm -hmm. He he didn't start until his uh, junior year. But obviously, just when he got his chance, yeah, you know, like yeah, oh, it was time. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it nah, was. It was so nice. It was yeah. time. And obviously, you said to see it, to see it now come full circle. He's back coaching mm -hmm. and giving back, and like he's he's a he's a gem. And so, what do you see? Like, I mean, that's a great segue. What do you see for? What would you want to see? Like you said, for this next era, because I really do think. Everything peaks at different times. You know, football yeah. had their own such moment, and I feel like we're kind of in a new era for Clemson football. Yeah. But Clemson, Clemson's always been a, a football school. Yeah. But to get that national claim, like, I mean, we – basketball earned some respect. So oh, yeah. what would you want to see this next era? I think the biggest thing I want to see is guys stay. Like, uh, you know, Ian Shefflin is here. He's going into his senior year. Yeah. That's – and you see the development he's had. Right. Like, um, my sophomore year, his freshman year – um. When I went down, like I was talk talking earlier, when I went down at Louisville, um, played the first minute of the game, um, came out with hurt foot or whatever, he went in uh, and played for most of the game, him and Ben Middlebrooks. Uh, and um, I, I, I texted him after. I was like hey, – so he, he kind of had a rough game. Yeah. Um, you know, down the stretch he had some plays, you know, didn't go his way. And plays that now he would make, like 100%. Yeah. Like uh, – and which is incredible to see, but you know, I, he had a kind of a rough game. We went on the bus, and uh, I texted him a little thing, a little paragraph. I was like, "Hey, man, like these are growing pains." Like, it was a it was a pretty lengthy paragraph. Basically, the gist of it was like, "Hey, man, like no one else is gonna see this. This is this is that text, but like you gotta realize this is something you gotta go through. Right. And like if you can get through this, these kind of growing pains, like coach ripped you in the locker room after, yeah, like and you'd be able to accept that like." Hey, this wasn't me. This is where I grow from. Yeah. This is where in two years from now, I'm going to look back and see where I was right. as a freshman. Like, that's what's going to make you great. And so seeing guys like I would want to see guys like that stay like he did, like I did, like Hunter did, yeah. um, like Chase did. Uh, like Chase battled and battled and battled through injuries and personal stuff. Right. Has a huge tournament for us. Gets us, the, I mean, gets us to the Elite Eight. Facts. And so, like, what I would love to see is – Guys come in, freshmen, still utilize the portal. You have to nowadays. Yeah. But freshmen come in and accept their role like I did, come in as a high title recruit, accept their role as being behind somebody, wait their turn, develop, and then use that as fuel to fire and, yeah. like, be ready when it's their time. That, I think that's how you build a program and a culture, man. And I think Coach Brown has done a gr great job of that. Now it's, it's tougher now with the portal. But, like, you have guys like we have a number 24 class coming in in yeah. the country so like we have now the class to do that with i remember yeah. my freshman year we were 24th in the country yeah and we had a good recruiting class one guy's in the nba one guy's got a chance to go now yeah uh and then one just has had a huge year in another school so like obviously those two, other two guys left right. but um you know like bringing in a class young 
have him accept their role and grow and develop them. And I think that's what Coach Brown knows about, and he's got a great chance of doing that. You know? Yeah, bro, I think that's going to be – like, I really do feel like this is – obviously, you got great momentum yeah. to hopefully go get some bigger-time recruits mm-hmm. to, for some guys that can be convinced in the program. Yeah. Talk about uh, – what was the dream when Coach Brown now came to you, you know, in high school? You yeah. could have went – I don't know, where, where were you thinking about going? What was – besides Clemson? Yeah. And then talk about, like, that process of, like – of convincing you to Mm -hmm. stay at home and come to Clemson? Yeah, so growing up, um, my sister was a volleyball player at Florida. And honestly, my my dream school was probably Florida. Just that's the only place I really knew. Yeah. They had a history of a great basketball program. I kind of noticed like the everything school, especially back then. Uh, So – as I went down there, also at the time, I had, like, no offers. No, no, you're not getting recruited at all. So I was like, oh, Florida would be sick. Yeah. So – I started getting recruited and started gain, gaining momentum and stuff like that. And uh, I basically was like, the more I went down there, when like once I was getting recruited, had other options, the more I went down there, I was like, it's about six hours away. It's yeah. not it's not an easy six hours. Like It's speed traps everywhere. The campus is huge. Right. And no, not in Florida. Florida's incredible. It's yeah. just beautiful. It's pure, perfect school for my sister because we're two different people. She loved it and had an incredible time there. But for me, I, the more I came to Clemson, I fell in love with it. And, as I continue to get recruited, I, you know, I was putting out, I think, my top five. And right before that, this is back whenever Louisville was like a top five country, mm-hmm. the top five team in the country. They contacted me as a junior. They were like, uh, either junior or senior, I can't remember. But uh, while I was still getting put in my recruiting yeah. out. Um, no, it was junior year. No, I remember. Because it was senior year, I would have already been recruited or been committed. But it contacted me, and I was like, uh, hey, I'm not really looking – to bring any other schools in the, in the mix. I kind of have my top five. Right. Uh, really probably a top three at that point as I was – I knew what three I favorited. Yeah. But my high school coach was like, you know what you're doing, right? Like, I had already texted him. I didn't really consult with anybody. Yeah. I basically was like, like – Made hey, decision. Yeah, I was like, hey, like, not really interested. Um, uh, no, not to them. They were, they were a great program. And uh, so my high school coach was like, you do realize what you just did, right? Like now that they're not going to recruit you, probably other blue bloods aren't going to come in the mix, like mm-hmm. Kansas and Duke and North yeah. Carolina. I got recruited by North Carolina a little bit, but Walker Kessler was going there. Yeah, right. So I knew that really wasn't an option. But, uh, yeah, like going into that, and then once I put Louisville off the off the thing, it was like, okay, like I'm really liking Clemson. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of got down to Virginia Tech and Clemson. Yeah. Uh, Mike Young – I got the Virginia Tech job, and he mm. coached my dad in college. Mm. He uh, I was great for my family. Like, he was in Walford and Spartanburg, so yeah. I used to always go to the kids' camps. I know his kids well. Like, great dude. Man, Lo- love nice. the guy like a father. Yeah. He, he was amazing. And um, so then as I was getting recruited, it was like it was tough to tell him no. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I, I fell in love with Clemson, and um, there was no really no other place that I even had an interest in yeah. after, yeah, after I realized that. What, what was the vision Brian Hall gave you? Like, he said, all right, P.J. Hall, if you come to Clemson, yeah. you know, maybe he's not selling too much, but what, what was he telling you? Like, because obviously he had to convince you yeah. to come here. So if the first – or one thing he told me was uh, in terms of potential, he was like, listen, like, I don't tell many guys this, uh, probably because, like, a lot of guys didn't come through at the time. They were big recruits. But uh, he, he didn't tell many guys this, but, like, you are a guy that could possibly end up leaving early. Like, mm-hmm. you're a guy I could see you as a junior year leaving early yeah. and stuff, uh, which ended up ringing true. Uh, but, you know, like – his vision in terms of life at Clemson was like, listen, like you're coming here, you got Amir Sims, all conference player. You'll right. learn from him. Not to, he didn't he never told me I'd start, never told me I'd play. Yeah. Never told me that it'd be easy or fun. Right. Uh <laughs> which that first year wasn't. Uh, yeah. but yeah, he basically told me like if you can commit to this and commit to this journey, like if you can see this plan, I tell you it's it's gonna be special. Yeah. And uh it was that. And I you know, I believed in him. I, I loved his philosophies, what he was about, his personable <clears throat> At the time, I didn't know he'd get that loud. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, uh, staff was great. Coach Bender was uh, was there, too. Yeah. So he helped recruit me. Uh, Coach uh, Lucas McKay, he was still there. So uh, some of the guys that recruited me are still here as well. So, you know, it was um, – at the end of the day, it wasn't a hard decision. Yeah. yeah. That's dope, bro. Yeah, man. Speaking of, like, uh, South Carolina, staying at home, I want you to give your perspective because – we're not the hoop state. You know, we, mm-hmm. the other Carolina definitely yeah. takes reign yeah. for being the hoop state. But South Carolina, we really have been oh, putting yeah. on. No, recently, yeah, we have. You know, been. so just speak to, like, I feel like South Carolina basketball has earned, earned its respect. From your perspective, what would you say about that? No, yeah. I, I don't know if we're necessarily the hoop state yet. No, we're definitely but, not. Yeah, we're, de- no, we're definitely yeah. not that. I don't say. Especially so my my – Senior year, the North South game got canceled because COVID. Yeah, and boy, they were loaded. They they were loaded. <laughs> it was like Zay Todd and um, I'm blanking on names now, but they were loaded. Uh, so, but um, 
Yeah, man. I mean, recently, I mean, like, yeah, uh, Zion, obviously, 2018. Um, then, I, yeah, ja, ja as well. Uh, me, Miles Tate went uh, high major. Josiah James. Um, was that Aaron Naismith from uh, mm-hmm. or, um, yeah, no, another, another Porter Gower guy? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of guys. This, and now Dylan Jones just ended the draft, too, from Columbia. So, wow. I mean, there's – in the past, like – Four or five years, there's been a lot of guys coming through. Gigi Jackson in Correct. the lead now. Um, What's the kid? Uh, this kid going to Texas. From, yeah, from Cam Mexico. Scott. He can play. Tough. Yeah, he can play. He can really play. Julian Phillips. He was a couple years younger than me. He's with the Bulls now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, one year at Tennessee. Like, there's been a lot of guys come through South Carolina that didn't didn't go anywhere. It's not as big anymore with AAU, but like right. le- like like uh, KG did back in the mm-hmm. day, leaving. And uh, going to a prep school, which kind of had to do back then. Right. Um, now, now that AAU is so prevalent, like yeah. being able to stay home and stay at your high school is uh, real cool. And a lot of these guys are doing that. So it's been there's been a lot of talent coming through. Yeah, come a lot on, of South Cat. The bar yeah. the bar has definitely been raised. Oh yeah. Uh, get into obviously we talked about high school. One thing I did just learn about you that you weren't always going to be a basketball player. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to imagine you in some baseball pants, tall as hell. So tell me about PJ Hall, the baseball player. <laughs> I uh yeah, that was like my first love, and now that like I haven't played it in forever. In high school, whenever I was still playing, it was like were you this tall? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or uh, like junior year and on, sophomore yeah. and junior year and on, yeah. But uh, and like way more gangly. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like I look like kind of thin now, but like I'm like I, I'm like two forty. Like I'm a, I'm a big yeah. Guy. Let the people like, know. Let the people yeah, know. So like, um, but in high school I was like soaking wet two o five. Yeah. So like yeah, it's. It looked a little different out there, but um, yeah. So and uh, like early on, that wasn't my first love, but um, uh, as I got to like freshman year, I was like, I'm about I'm about like six seven. Like, yeah, I probably, I probably need to start working at basketball. So, and the more I did, like basketball is always kind of like like more up pace for me, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a little more fun. Yeah. Um, but baseball was like my outlet. What'd you, what'd you play? What was pitcher, pitcher in first base. Come yeah. On. Yeah. I, I throw it hard, but I know where it was going. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- that was, that was honestly my biggest problem. Like, like, because I was ended up a basketball player. Yeah. Once I chose basketball, I like kind of stopped working at baseball right. and I used it as an outlet. Did you it ever was, clock time or clock speed? Oh, uh, in high school. What, what was PJ throwing? In high school, I got up to like 86 or 87. Okay. Like it was like mid to upper age. If I really got into it, like 80, if I were to pitch, I'd sit at like 84, 85. Yeah. I'm not going to go and throw as hard as I can. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I got 35 more pounds on me, I, and I'll, and I'll, it's all it's a lot more muscle. I, I'm dead serious. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I jam my finger, so I can't throw it right now. Yeah. But I've been wanting to get clocked. Like all right, we go. Nah, we're gonna, I mean, y'all heard it here like, first. Look, I, I we really, got no more baseball team now. You know, so we, we're going. I'm dead serious. Bring the boy I, over there. I really do think I could touch nine zero. I uh, I was long toss with my boy the other day, and I mean we're like. I mean, we're, it's it, we're throwing at the ridge, and it's if you live at the ridge, you know it at the back corner. Yeah, throwing up the hill, like I mean, go ways up. I'm just flipping it, and it's, you hear the whistle off the ball. I, I still got a cannon attached to me. Okay, so I look, I, yeah. I like the challenge. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. Let yeah. the finger get healed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's make it to that next level. Maybe like next summer. You know what I'm saying? Let's <laughs> yeah. come back. Yeah, and let's make it happen. Now I'm not saying it's gonna look good. Like it, 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 it's not gonna be a strike. Don't don't expect that but i still think i can throw it pretty hard yeah so we're gonna see but yeah bad to what you were saying it was it got to be my outlet of yeah. like like getting away from basketball and um i needed that like i grew up with all these guys uh playing travel baseball with right. them so then when i get to high school they were all still my boys obviously yeah. i mean i was miles tate is still one of my best friends yeah. ever so i mean we he called me after the sweet 16 or after the th- round of 32 he's like yeah. we're talking on the bus he's hype and stuff um but like baseball were the guys I knew since I was about five and six, yeah. and so then getting away from basketball, and going and hanging out with like my day one boys is like it was it was really cool. That's yeah. dope, bro. Yeah. Now I will say, Miles is also a day one because I, I grew up in the church league basketball city oh, playing word. that. Yeah, only white boy in the league. <laughs> yeah, so hey, come on, like, yeah. like a little soul. <laughs> Look, that yeah. makes that makes a lot of sense now, <laughs> no, for sure. Um, but talk about this, okay? So, kind of like think about your career. What was your favorite place to play in ACC? I can't say Little John because that's that's biasy, but like I, I will say like if I can choose anywhere, I'm gonna say Little John just Don't because sleep. of like dude, it's it's fun. Like yeah. it's loud too. I saw some guy like made a TikTok about like the best college uh, yeah. basketball arenas in the ACC, and he had us at, like three. I was like, oh, hey, wow. yeah, like, that's that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So, but other than Little John, 
I will say this year playing at the Dean Dome was mm. sick. Now you, you got to win for it to be special because <laughs> like it's like it is cool, but yeah. like they get rowdy, and mm. so like if you're losing, like like the year before we got smacked, like, right? We got, we got smoked, so it wasn't very fun at all. But right. like I will say like. That baby blue everywhere, seats like 20,000, dude, it's special. You got, like, banners galore in the yeah. up there. You look up, you see the Jordan jersey. It's sick. It's That place is awesome. That yeah. is dope. But uh, I, I'm I, – without bias, I'm dead serious. Little John is my favorite. That place, it gets it gets loud, man. It's fun. Shout yeah. out to the Clemson family, bro. Shout out to the Clemson family. <laughs> bro, you are um, – I feel like you definitely at yourself in Clemson history, so – well done, bro. I mean, Appreciate it. like I said, I saw something else that said, uh, would you be surprised? Well, I don't want you to be surprised how you feel about it. But they said, PJ Hall should be in the rafters. If you see that, you know? Like, I mean, that would be, ba- be crazy. It would be crazy, but you start looking like legitimacy. I mean, I feel like broken records. Mm. You set, set a great standard. Like, you revamped the program. Uh, for that day to come, what do you think that would feel like? Dude. Uh, I'm I'm a real emotional guy, no. so I, I, I just like you know after the Sweet Sixteen we hadn't won anything yet. Right, in the locker room like tearing up. So I'm like we we're finally doing something. Yeah, doing something. so like, I'm an emotional guy. So like if that were to come, yeah, I promise you, it'd be hard not to cry. Like because right. you know like you you want to leave a lasting impact. I remember Brownell one time my freshman year he was getting on me about something in practice and he was like he was like pointed up to those guys. He was like, do you want to be good like mm-hmm. at all? And he was pointing out. I was like. I want to be great. Like I looked him right in his eyes, and I was, and he was like, "Well, then," you, and they started yeah, rip, ripping me. Again. Right, yeah, right. He was like, "Well, you got to do it." Yeah. So, you know, uh, to, but to be able to like as a freshman, like have those expectations for yourself coming in, and mm-hmm. almost like think like, "Yeah, this is like this is where I'm going to like come in here and try to have an impact." Uh, I, if those guys, if if whoever votes on it wants me in there, I, I'll gladly take it. But. There, there's a lot of big names out there that seems like they did more than me, and they've done incredible things. So we'll see, but it, it'd be special. That's yeah. dope, bro. You definitely belong. Finish up with this because I think it's a good way. Because I feel like people, I think one of the reasons people love you as a fan favorite one, like the passion you play with. You kind of you can <laughs> see that even in an interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the passion, <laughs> the emotion that you play with. But I think also like the character that you've displayed in like really organic moments. Like you can't you can't really like fake helping somebody up. Just tell people. I mean, where does that come from? And how does that, like, the sportsmanship, yeah. the character, like, just speak to that. Yeah, so I will say, like, I don't get twisted. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you. Like, I'll, <laughs> right. I, I want to win. Like, I'll, I'll definitely cut you if I need to. But, like, yeah, like, one good example, I think, is at UNC this year. I helped out, like, Harrison Ingram. Yeah. Uh, I will say, like, I thought I killed him. Like, I, like so he right. – I, I, I had fallen on that play. And I, uh, I landed on something, somebody. And I look back, and he's like – in agony on the ground, yeah. like holding his leg, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I just killed this guy!" Right. So, so I'm like, on, like play is going on, and I'm like looking at him, like trying to help him up, and um, he was also grabbing his knee. Turns out he caught a cramp, but oh. uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he uh, luckily he was all right. But yeah, like I think like there's a time and place to you know have that edge, and you know at the same time like I always have it on the court. Like right. there's also to an extent a little bit of mind game going on for sure. Like you know. I'm helping somebody up. Hope the hope the ref sees it. Or, yeah, you know, yeah like, just <laughs> hope, hope that hope this guy is like, oh, this guy's nice. And then yeah. you know, the same next possession, you're catching a bow to the rib. So, Correct. You know, it's it's um it's yin and yang, and yeah. so but you know there is a aspect of like you know not being a not being a prick. Yeah. Correct. So, I already know where you're going. Yeah. For there, sure. There's there's an aspect you know being a nice uh, being a good guy that's like personable right. and you know Alabama game. Grant Nelson comes in and he's like, hey, what's good, bro? You doing all right? Uh, tap on the tail he's like hey what's up man like yeah it's like you know good people you know we're out there to compete and fight and uh like tooth and nail but at the same time it's like it's just another dude yeah. like you know no so doubt. treat people like treat people with respect and uh go out there and still compete you know? for sure all right we'll finish with this bro what would you um i mean obviously people have their own like thoughts about how your legacy like wording but if you could word your own legacy like what you want to be remembered as and by what would you say uh, if I get word my own legacy, you know, that's tough because, like, you know, that's something, like, you really kind of do with actions. You know, like, I think that's something that people do for you with words mm-hmm. and put in, put it into words for other people. But if I had to, like, I'd say one thing that I want would want people to know is, first of all, man of faith. You know, yeah. as I go out there, um, before I'm getting my name called, I'm saying a prayer and, like I said, I'm an emotional guy. I got yeah. a towel. Like some, I've, like before regular season games, I've like wiped tears. Just yeah. like, you know, it's like overcome with emotion. And, uh, you know, that's that's another thing. So, I mean, man of faith, I'm out there every time I'm playing. 
trying to glorify God, um, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's Amen. number one cornerstone of my life. Yeah. And then with that, just immense passion, immense will to win and a desire to win. Every time I'm out there, like, I mean, I remember my sophomore year, we're playing FSU and we're like second to last in the league and we get a five second call and I'm going freaking nuts because it's like, it was a huge <laughs> possession. Like right. we wanted to win. And that's how I've always been. Like I've always just wanted to win and whatever it is, doesn't matter if it's we're playing cards, if we're playing knockout, if we're yeah. playing golf, like why are you heated on the course? So like, <laughs> you know, like a will to win and a desire to win and an expectation to win. Yeah. That's why I'd say people want me to want to remember me as, is like I came in here with an expectation to help advance this program. And yeah. I, you know, I hope that people recognize that I did. No, well, yeah. well done, brother. Uh, if I could speak for Clemson family, proud of you. Thank you. It's been cool to see your journey, bro. From yeah. like, like you said, skinny kid that came in. Well, <laughs> well, a lot of, I mean, a lot of, a lot of hype, and you lived up to mm-hmm. it. And obviously, if like your journey is like one of those, you know, God don't show you everything at once. Like if He yeah. showed you all the stuff that you would have went through, exactly, to get to the point you want to be at, you yeah. would have never. It would have been a little iffy, but you got there, bro. And I think it's think about it all the time, yeah. Correct, and yeah. I think it's really cool to see. It's really like the. I mean, it's 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 also crazy because not everybody's story gets to end like that. A lot of people kind of end with a bitter mm-hmm. taste in their mouth. Mm-hmm. But obviously, y'all were able to man really ride off into the sunset and be proud of what you, what you built and the, the like the bricks you laid. And like I said, I would love to see what the next chapter looks like. Yeah, I think it's definitely the stock is up. You know, like it's trending <laughs> in the right direction, yeah, bro. Yeah. And so I, I imagine can't we ain't going we're not going down from here. But uh, what would you say to the Clemson fans? Sign off with this, PJ Hall, Clemson fans. What would you say to them? Uh, to sign off, man, uh, keep being a fan, keep buying stock. Like Dabo said, it's not too late to get in Come on. and, uh, you know, be ready. Go Tigers. Come on, go Tigers. <laughs> PJ Hall, thank y'all for tuning in. Like, subscribe, come on, all that good stuff. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see you back with another episode. Peace.